There's so much talk about how different generations are, about how we're all constantly at war with one another. But for as much as we may disagree about hair parts and sock heights, millennials and Gen Z have actually come to have a lot in common. The next younger generation coming in and taking over is par for the course, because that's how the forward movement of time works. But underneath the aesthetic differences between these generations, there are a lot of surprising commonalities, both in how they approach the world and how the world tries to bring them down. So what are some of these big similarities? And are there some actually useful lessons that Gen Z could take from millennial struggles? Let's take a closer look. I'm not as dumb as I am. Millennial was long, and in some cases still is, used to derisively refer to young people at large, even as millennials themselves entered adulthood, and occasionally still happens even as the oldest of the cohort are now entering middle age. Much of this stemmed from the fact that millennials were seen as stunted in adolescence, unwilling to, afraid of, or even incapable of growing up. Ah! We're planning our whole week. Like old people, we used to be spontaneous and weird. We used to eat cereal out of Frisbees because we didn't have any bowls. So much of what millennials got hate for in their younger years were actually the older generations projecting their frustrations about their own failings and how they let their kids down onto those same kids. I am not a successful adult. I don't eat vegetables and or take care of myself. And it's because of you. Millennials were put down for ideas that the older generations had put on them, like telling them that they could be whatever they wanted to be, and then getting mad at them for having dreams, or giving their kids participation trophies because they couldn't stand that their kid wasn't a winner, and then mocking those same kids for expecting to be rewarded for doing their best, even if they weren't number one. I am a millennial. We are known for our entitlement and narcissism. Some say it's because we're the first generation where every kid gets a trophy just for showing up. There was a pretty pervasive idea that millennials just wanted to stay kids forever, unburdened by responsibility. But the reality was that millennials weren't just choosing to forego quote unquote real adulthood, but so many of the classic markers of adulthood, like a stable job, owning a home, starting a family, were made so much more difficult to acquire as millennials began entering the adult world. Honestly, I wanna live by myself. Where? You ain't got no money! I didn't mean to come at you like that, but let's try it. Now, Gen Z is getting hit with much of the same stereotyping. The eldest members of the Gen Z cohort are nearly 30, but Gen Z is still largely used mostly to frame things as youthful and childish. People who have big dreams and unrealistic ideas about the world because they just haven't grown up and accepted reality yet. But as with millennials, Gen Z are actually reacting to the world they've been forced to enter. They didn't make these problems, and now they're having to figure out how to deal with them while simultaneously being shamed for not doing things things the right way. But continuing to find a way to hold on to things that bring you joy, and not being willing to let the world crush you in the face of seemingly insurmountable problems isn't childish, it's brave. Millennials were branded as plastic and fake, a generation that was too concerned with aesthetics, but were simultaneously shamed for not keeping up with the previous generation's ideas of what aesthetics and looks were acceptable and desirable. If you kept up with the trends of the times, you were shallow. The barnacle. They stick it on your car when you have unpaid parking tickets. And I couldn't pay to remove it because I just maxed out my credit card on these insanely expensive pair of sunglasses. If you didn't, you were lazy. The millennial interest in looks and the rejection of the same were both seen as a reflection of their supposed larger tendency towards narcissism. Young women, of course, were hit with this catch-22 the hardest. If you got plastic surgery to fit the hot aesthetic, you were mocked. But if you didn't try to look hot, you were branded a loser. This gave rise to the cool girl, who attempted to walk the line, fitting into every socially demanded hot girl box without trying. We've got videos on that whole issue if you want to learn more. Young celebrities who were having to battle disordered eating and other major issues in the spotlight were branded self-centered and dangerous. While in the same breath, people would promote the same kind of disordered thinking as a hot new weight loss trend. But you need a trainer. Come on, girl, you owe it to yourself. You don't have to settle for this. You better call me. <laughs> okay. Fuck you. Women of every generation, of course, have had to deal with wild, impossible to meet societal expectations about how they should look. But millennials were the first to have both their looks and critiques of them not only reflected back to them, but also seen and analyzed on a global scale as they were the first to grow up under the spotlight of social media. But millennials also began to use this connection to their advantage, building communities based around self-acceptance and learning not to base your self-worth on what others think. Of course, for Gen Z, 
see, this is all ramped up tenfold. Social media is now not only a major part of everyday life, but the main lens through which many people view the entire world. Trends come and go with lightning speed, and people get shamed both for trying to keep up and for missing out or making the choice not to try to keep up. There's a facade of self-acceptance and being true to who you are, but underneath much of that is still the same old push to fit oneself into the most socially acceptable box at any cost. While millennials and Gen Z might not agree on everything, one thing we can all agree on is how much we love to treat those we care about. Spark something uncommon this holiday season with incredible hand-picked gifts from Uncommon Goods. Finding fun, affordable gifts can make the holiday season so stressful, but Uncommon Goods makes it so easy to find awesome things that your friends and family will love without spending forever scrolling sites and searching through stores and without breaking the bank. We found so many great goodies on their site. Some of our favorites have been big with Babish's Eat What You Watch cookbook that's allowed us to start cooking so many tasty meals from some of our favorite films. And to keep track of those films as we've watched or rewatched them, we've been loving this 100 movie scratch off bucket list. It's such a fun way to keep track of what we've seen and what we still want to watch. Both of these would make the perfect gift for the movie lover in your life. Uncommon Goods helps you support artists and small businesses and find high quality unique gifts for everyone, from kids to grandparents and everyone in between. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, Goods, they give back $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. Many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches, so make sure to start shopping early before they sell out this holiday season. And you can get a discount and support The Take. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash The Take. That's uncommongoods.com slash The Take for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Millennials were seen as being un willing to do real work. Even as they were putting in 70-hour weeks in we work fishbowls and getting paid in free t-shirts and the thrill of being part of something big. Because the fact that a handful of tech companies had game rooms that no one even had time to use meant that no one anywhere was really working, apparently. Do, do you understand? We, we can't lose the millennials. We need them. <laughs> Why? Because they work 80 hours a week for free beer and t-shirts. As college, housing, and pretty much every other kind of cost skyrocketed, we just did not keep up. $200 in the Upper West Side will just get me a bagel and a soy latte. Millennials became burnt out, feeling like they had given so much to careers that were willing to throw them away at a moment's notice without a second thought. And for this, we're again branded as lazy or unwilling to take on responsibility. But this also led to many millennials trying out new avenues for work like blogging and blogging, which were then immediately branded as not real jobs because they were on the internet. She's never gonna make a good stepmom. Doing YouTube makeup tutorials is not a career. Now, in hindsight, it's clear that millennials were just ahead of the curve with where the trends were going. It's a blog that I've been doing. I'm really liking my photography, and people always say that they like the way that I dress, so I've been posting pictures of my outfits on this site. The major problems with the job market haven't been fixed. The low pay, the layoffs, the push to see your job as the only thing that matters in your entire life. You deserve paid what? work. I can't what? get paid work. I just graduated from Cornell with a business degree. That's the worst ivy. But these new paths for income have helped give some members of the millennial and Gen Z generations some new options for work outside of that old school grind. As they've entered the workforce, Gen Z have been loudly pushing back against many of the bad and even dangerous practices that have become normalized, like overwork and the expectation that one always be available. And so, unsurprisingly, the people at the top have begun to brand them unwilling to work too. Because at the end of the day, that kind of admonishment from the older generation isn't about work ethic. It's about being upset that younger people won't fall in line and agree to be treated poorly just because that's how things work. As millennials tried to push back against the things in their lives and society at large that were creating harm and setting everyone up for a worse future, they were, surprise, branded, selfish, and childish. I don't really think you would understand any of my problems because you seem like you have a tremendous amount of willpower and general togetherness. When they began trying to have open, honest conversations about mental health and other pressing issues, they were seen as whiny and weak, told to just cover up all those feelings with a steely facade because that was the only way to be a real adult. Millennials were also dragged for caring about social issues, told that they were just too young and out of touch to understand the bigger picture, and that their minds would change when they got older. But that actually hasn't been the case. While older generations did follow the trend of becoming more insular and 
and conservative with age, millennials have not followed in those footsteps. Getting older didn't make them want to pull up the ladder behind them to make things better for themselves, but instead just made it all the more clear how important it is to change things for future generations. Why is it February and hotter than the devil's booty hole outside? Climate change. We are living in the middle of its disastrous effects. Gen Z has been even louder in their willingness to stand up for themselves and others, and have been able to make even more of an impact thanks to the connection provided by social media. They continue to get hit with the accusations that they only care about these things for selfish reasons, or because they just don't really understand what's going on. But thankfully, they have no problem fighting back against that and continuing to push forward to a better tomorrow. Every generation has their own struggles they've had to face, and they look different for everyone. I don't understand why you're yelling at me when I'm in emotional pain. Yeah, well, you know who else is in emotional pain? Who? Everyone. But that's also what makes it so interesting that so much about millennial and Gen Z's paths are so similar. Maybe it's a sign that, as much flack as we might get for trying, we really have been making large societal shifts that won't just disappear as we start to age. Even with all of the roadblocks and setbacks they faced, millennials have been able to carve out happy, functional adulthoods for themselves in many ways. Who says we have to race into being adults? Why wouldn't you want to enjoy carefree life as long as you could? It doesn't look like the adulthood of their parents. Which which can make it feel like they're still trying to play catch up in some ways. Home ownership, saving for retirement, if they even get to retire, etc. That's your total equity? $374? Are you kidding me? You gotta keep more money in your bank account than that. No, I know. But it's also given them a new freedom to forge their own path and create adult lives that are based on what they want and how they hope to shape their world. And that's really the biggest lesson Gen Z can take from the millennial struggle. Don't let other people's ideas about what your life or adulthood should look like force you to put yourself in a box you hate and never let them convince you to stop fighting to make the world a better place for you and everyone else in it. This shit is hard and confusing. The last thing you need is to feel worse because you're not feeling something you're supposed to feel. You do what feels good to you. That's the take. Click here to watch the video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.